beautiful selection uh, that they have shared. I guess we all can agree that His grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. God's grace is sufficient. I ask that you turn today to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Yes, ma'am. 
I was taught to say thank you when someone did something for me. I was taught it was good to clean up behind myself. I was taught good manners, well disciplined. I was spanked as a child, whipped, however you want to say it, switched. We had the belt, whooped with a brush, spatula, stitching cord. Objects closest by. My mother could get the message across to me that she was frustrated. Books, newspaper, Christ water. We were spanked. We were corrected. We were taught good manners. We was even taught that going to church was good. We was taught those things. We were taught to get along with other people. Respect others. Who taught those things? However, even that good teaching did not save me. I still, uh, that good teaching could not keep my flesh from rearing up and doing what it desired to do. There's still things today that I did that my mother still doesn't know about that I would have been shamed if she did find out. Still, I uh, learned how to work, made good money, learned how to make money the right way, learned how to make money the wrong way. I've stolen, I've done some things I'm not so happy with. I want you to know that I haven't always been a Christian. Ain't always been saved. I've dealt with mind altering substances from marijuana to alcohol. Some things that you couldn't even identify with. I hung with some of the roughest and toughest people that are either dead or in prison now in Nashville. Even after all that good teaching, after those good spankings, putting good morals in me, I chased a lot of things in the world, but those things only set me up for another pleasure where I never found satisfaction. Amen. Even though I thought I was progressing and getting somewhere, I was getting worse. Deeper and deeper deeper into depravity, destruction. Values that I was brought up with, I began to lose those values because of the fleshy desires to satisfy me. Well, I bet. Wasn't thinking about God, wasn't seeking God, but I thank God he sought me. Amen. Amen. I walked according to the course of this world. I was a children of wrath, even as others. That's right. But God. But God in God's time. When it pleased God. As Paul said, who separated me from my mother's womb yes. and called me by his grace. Yes. God, who looking back over my life, not just what I did, but how I was conceived, mm -hmm. which made me who I am. Yes. God, who is rich mercy. in mercy. Mercy. There were people that did the same things I did, but I didn't go. Yes. There were people that, that, that did things that, uh, that didn't do what I did, but I did and gone. Yes. And, and not just dead and gone, they died never to come to know the Lord. Yes. God is rich in mercy. Yes. So do you remember when the Lord first 
saved you. Do you remember the mercy and the grace that was bestowed upon you? The love that you realize that God had for you, an undeserving sinner. Do you remember? Do you remember how you were broken before the Lord looking at the mercy that he's bestowed upon us? Oh, what brokenness, what repentance. What, 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 realizing how uh, unworthy I am of your love, God. Do you remember? Do you remember the conviction? And then you remember the comforting of his word. Realizing what gift we have received. Do you remember the excitement that you had? When the Lord saved you. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about being excited about his grace. Amen. I'm talking about being excited about this salvation. Yeah. Oh, you wanted to go and tell everybody, the Lord saved me. Yeah. There was nothing that could stand in our way when the Lord first saved me. You talking about coming to church. I'm talking about being early to Sunday school. I'm talking about getting to church and, and hoping that they open up testimony service. Yes. Please, somebody, I pray that deacon say, all right, it's time for testimony service. You need to first stand up. Yeah. I couldn't wait yeah. to testify yeah. of what the Lord had done. I'm talking about private time with the Lord. You would read your Bible. And could nothing get you out of that word. You were so excited about your Jesus, about your God, and what he had done. Amen. Oh, Amen. the excitement that we had. Oh, I, you wanted to come to every, we had a Sunday night service. You wanted to be there. Yes. Every time they talk about whether it was revival or whatever, you wanted to attend every bit of it. Couldn't wait. Wanted to be there. Some of us are so excited. We thought the Lord had called us to preach. Watch out. <laughs> you learn John 3, 16, and you want to tell the world. For God so loved the world. We were just so excited about what the Lord had done. Could nobody tell us anything different. Life is better now. Now life is sweet, and my joy, what? Please. It's complete for our sake. Say. 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 But evidently, if we look around, something happened. That, that excitement, that joy, that it still fills some of our hearts. God bless you. But for some reason or another, that, that motivation, that talking about Jesus, we started to learn that everybody wasn't excited about Jesus as we were. Yeah, that's right, bro. Even people that called themselves Christians was not really excited about that Jesus that we knew about. And you start talking about Jesus and they didn't want to hear it anymore. You sit in church and, and, and you start to hear the mumbles and the grumbles and people making distractions on purpose mm -hmm. in the church. You start to realize that everybody's not as excited about this Jesus that you are. But also other things start to happen when you start to share this Jesus on the job in the community or you ran home and you told people closest to you that they started to persecute you and told you you was crazy. Yeah. I don't know about the Lord that much. Y'all ain't heard that one, have you? Mm How -hmm. y'all stay in church all day? They, they, they ain't doing nothing. They preaching down there robbing y'all. Taking y'all money. Start saying all those types of things. You're a fool. That's nothing we was excited about. We was excited about giving. Yeah, we couldn't wait to give. We couldn't wait to get our check, right? 
Even arguing with my manager about uh, 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 10% coming out. How did the government get it first? I didn't understand. <laughs> but we wanted to give it to God first, right? We knew we were doing what we were supposed to be doing. That's another Bible study. But we was excited. Things started happening. What started happening? Life. Because sometimes when, 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 when Christianity, uh, uh, living saved, or being saved is presented, is presented that you're saved now and all your problems are gone. Oh, life is just so much easier now that you have been saved. But what we learn is that problems don't go away when the Lord saves you. We don't stop getting sick. As some ministries will teach you. We don't stop having struggles. Our families, everybody in your family, don't get saved like you desire. And most of all, persecution comes. And these things begin to wear on you. And that excitement you don't have to say amen because it's shown from Sunday to Sunday, Wednesday to Wednesday, Friday to Friday, and even in the midst of your trials and tribulations, that excitement to give God the glory is not evident anymore. That's for some of us, not all of us. You don't have to say anything. We're just watching you. That's all. We're just watching And so something happened. So as we look at the book of Hebrews today, we have our writer here talking to these Jews who used to be Judaizers, but now they're Christians. And here it is, they're Christians and they're excited about this, this salvation that the Lord has worked in them. It's what, what he has worked on the inside and beginning to work on the outside. And what happens is the Judaizers and others start to persecute them that have become Christians. And, 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 and man's natural response to any persecution or suffering is to avoid it. And so what happens is now they're Christians. In other words, they're not what they used to be. Anybody testify to that? That we're not what we used to be and you're going to get persecution because you're not what you used to be. You don't go where you used to go. You don't act like you used to act and the people that want you to act like them don't seem to understand that and the only way that they can get at you is to persecute you. Right. They want you to believe that you're missing out something on this fleeting world. Not realizing what joy has filled our hearts. They don't understand that we have been satisfied and we are content with Jesus alone. So the persecution, the trials, the tribulations, all these things began to come. And these Jews who were starting to starting to suffer and, and, and endure this persecution, praise God, the Hebrew writer comes and tells them, yes, you've changed from Judaizers to, 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 to Christianity now, and the persecution's going to come. But don't worry about that. We can't get weary while we're serving the Lord. And what better thing to do when a Christian, a brother or sister begins to get discouraged because of what's going on in their life is to point them to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we see chapter 12, verse 1. Everyone go there with us. And he starts out, wherefore, seeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, 
Amen. When we, when we, when the Lord saved us, we entered a race. In this race, there is a crown at the finish line. There is a goal at the finish line to look like Jesus. To be with him and be just like him. Sinners don't see it right now, but when we see him, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Amen. We might be, we might be snarled upon right now. People might talk about us right now, but we're going to be just like him. What good news, praise God. There's a race, praise God. And, and, and born again believer, I want you to know that this race is not going to be over in, in, in five minutes. No, it's not the one you see it. Pow, shoot off, and they start running around the track, and then four laps is over, or one lap is over. Oh, no, I want you to know it's more of a marathon. Yeah. It's a long race. It's a race of endurance. Yeah. In this race, in other words, God has a plan and a purpose and a goal for us. Yeah. In this race, Amen. And I like to call it your sanctification. Yeah. You're born again. We entered into this race. And the Hebrew writers tells us that this same race, we have already had some witnesses. And what we have to do, first of all, consider those witnesses. Look at what they went through. And notice how they had something that pleased God. Yeah. That's something that pleased God, God gave it to them. Yeah. In order that they might please him. Yeah. So that's why we have Hebrews 11 chapter. And it says, now faith is the what? substance of things hoped for and the evidence for the conviction of what? Things not seen. Then it says, for by it, what? Faith. The elders obtained grace. <laughs> Amen. We have faith today. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing what? The word of God. And so we have a great cloud of witnesses and the, 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 the writer tells us to let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. In other words, in order to run a race, and you guys have seen people run a race, the track coach requires that they run with no weights on. They must be as light as possible. Don't put on anything that will hinder you, slow you down, or trip you up. Right, right. right. And so the Hebrew writer tells us to lay aside those things, those, those weights and sin. Anybody get angry in here? Right. Well, don't let it, don't, don't sin. The Bible tells us to anger, sin not. Yes. And not the sun go down upon your wrath. Am I got malice, bitter, blasphemies in your heart, evil speaking? Yeah. These things are to be mortified. Yeah. We're going to lay these things aside. Mm -hmm. Run this race right. with patience. The race that is set before us. And then he tells us, looking unto Jesus. And we run this race with a look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look at the greatest example of our faith. Look at the initiator of our faith. Look at the one who not only was first partaker, but gave it to us. He is the originator 
of our faith. Right. He is the author and the finisher. Mm -hmm. He starts it and he works it and he completes it. We see him as the greatest example when he came into this world. Right. This old dying, fleeting world. He exhibited the greatest faith ever in the midst of trial, tribulation, persecution, praise God. Mm -hmm. As he was walking with the men on the road to Emmaus, mm -hmm. he told them, oh, not, praise God. Christ has suffered and then entered into glory. Yes. Yes. What example of faith did he have? Peter said he committed himself to the one that judges righteously. What great example of faith do we have? This man, he was revived, but he revived not again. Yes. 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 We see him, praise God, that he never threatened, praise God. Yeah. He committed himself to God. Yeah. Despite what was going on with him, he understood, he knew the joy that was set before him. Yeah. Jesus understood that suffering precedes glory. And when it was time that the Father be glorified, Jesus said, I must suffer. Amen. How many would raise our hands to work at a place like that? To take that job on? You gotta suffer. And then here comes glory. But he desired, he said, now it's time that the Father be glorified and now I must go to Jerusalem to be put to death. To die! Amen! Yeah. And so, here it is. <clears throat> Suffering precedes glory. He said, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise God, when we began to endure trial and tribulation, we must keep our eyes on Jesus. I remember there were two people that walked on water in the Bible. Anybody remember who they were? Mm -hmm. Peter and Jesus. Right, right. Peter couldn't do it as Jesus, right? right? However, when Peter said, Lord, bid me to come on the water to you, Jesus said, come. Right. Praise God. Peter was excited. Stepped out that boat and began to walk on water. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the wind began to blow, as soon as the things we started to become contrary, he took his eyes off of Jesus and began to look at the situation. He began to look at his circumstances. Right. He began to look at what was going on around him and he began to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. Yes. Praise the Lord. And what, what do we say here? Keep your eyes on Jesus. I don't care what happens in the midst of persecution. Keep your eyes on Jesus. In afflictions, in sickness, keep your eyes on Jesus. In struggles, when times get hard, in arguments and disputes, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy of that was set before him, entered the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. Sometimes we begin to go through and we talk about poor me, why me, God, why us? And you think that it's hard for you, you think it's tough for you, look at Jesus. All right. That's right. Look at the author and the finisher of our faith. And, and, and then, that's a rebuke right here. You think you're really going through something, you haven't resisted unto sin. You haven't resisted unto sin. Uh, uh, you haven't resisted blood. unto blood. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Look at him. Some people say, well, you don't understand what I'm going through. Things really get hard so 
the time. Let me tell you something. How, how can, can we get joy out of the death of someone? Can joy come out of that? Jesus died. <laughs> and I'm saved. Yeah. Thank God. Amen. Thank God for the death penalty. Yeah. Thank God for the cross. Yeah. Thank God that the Romans had, had something that they thought was so cruel to a human being. It worked out for me. Thank God for that cross that is a tree of life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes. yes. For me. Yes. Yes, situations seem gloomy and dark, but we know that weeping may endure for night. But joy, what? Comes in the morning. Oh, we know that we might endure pain in these bodies, but and these bodies are perishing, but though the outer man perish, what's going on on the inside? There's a chorus work going on on the inside. I know they are heavy. I know they are hard. But compared to eternity and the glory that shall be revealed, they're just light afflictions. Yes. And they only work but for a moment. Yes. We ought to give God the glory. Stop allowing 30 seconds of your day to, to 30 seconds of a situation to ruin the rest of your day. I always tell people that I win every I win every minute. Yeah, man. You might give me 20 seconds, but I got the last 40. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're already victorious. God has blessed us. We are blessed people. And our goal is to give him glory. Yeah. Yeah. We have to walk. We have to run this race with patience. And ye have forgotten the exhortation of speaking unto you as unto children. Right. Praise God. Look at these admonishments here. First of all, we have a great cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Right. We see that he endured, he endured the worst. For the joy that was set before him. Where is he now? At the right hand of God. Amen. Look at where God has brought us from. I was born not knowing him. Mm -hmm. But God who is rich in mercy. Yeah. Thank God for pouring out his spirit into our hearts. Whereby we're able to cry what? I, I, you don't understand. I was alienated from him. Yeah. I was alienated by wicked works in my mind. calls me son. Yeah. Yeah. I'm his child, praise Amen. God. Amen. And so what's going on? As a born again believer with trials, tribulations, frustrations, persecutions, what's going on? It's the same thing that's going on when you were growing up in your own household and your mom and your daddy told you don't do something. And you did it anyway. They corrected you. Mommy and daddy had the responsibility. God told us to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't what? Depart from it. Amen. Fathers, provoke not your children unto wrath, yeah. but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the law. Amen. Yes, fathers are to take the leading role in discipline. Yes. Amen. Yes, we're yes, not to sit back like Al Bundy. With the remote control in our hands and our pants, watching TV. We're to take the leading role in discipline. Yes. Amen. We're not to allow the little slick children to run to their mamas and get the answer. Mm -hmm. Parents, husband, wife, consult one with another. Yes. What did that kid say to you? Don't let them get by. No, you come together and you be a united force that when the king go to either one of us, they know what the answer is. Yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't let them divide us Amen. with their schemes and their tricks because they want to feel their little flesh and desires. That's right, brother. And they go to whoever they think is the weakest. Right, right, right. See, when I was growing up, my mother was more firm than my dad. 
My dad, I never got a whooping from my dad. He whooped my older brothers, but I never got a whooping from my dad. But I got a whooping from my mom. And, but so my mother was firm, so we would go to my daddy's to get away with everything. Because he didn't pay as much attention. Oh, we were boys. Let them do what they want on their boys. And just because I knew how to fix my own bologna sandwich don't mean I was growing up. Right. And my daddy kind of was passive in, uh -huh. in, in, in raising us or disciplining us. Yeah. He was good at getting on to us after the fact, but teaching us how to be proactive, he wasn't good at that. I loved him. But my mother was all over it. She made a lot of threats. She made a lot of promises. She fulfilled most of them. And let me tell you, even that good discipline though, even that good discipline wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough for salvation. God still had to do a work in my heart. The rich young ruler, he, he did everything. He was a good son. He grew up to be a good husband. Never cheated on his wife. Faithful in work. Respected in the community. Respected others in the community. And thought he had enough in order for salvation. And he came to Jesus and asked him, what must I do? I know I got it to inherit eternal life. I can do it, Jesus. I got it. I've done everything else. <laughs> Jesus asked him, you know what the law says? And he said, these things have I kept from my youth up. Right. Jesus said, okay, well go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor and follow me. That's right. And he said he went away. Right. For he had great riches. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why are we late to Sunday school? Why are we not excited like we were when the Lord saved us? Why are we not trying to get into prayer to the altar every time the prayer goes forth? Why are we not excited when somebody say preaching's going on, when Bible study's going on? Why are we not excited about getting to these things? Yeah. And because we've learned that the cost of following Christ yeah. is higher yeah. than our thoughts. Yeah. Right. Right. right, brother. Take up your cross. But there must something that must happen first. You have to do what? Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. How often? Daily. 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 We are in our lives making a mockery of what it looks like to be a Christian, to be a disciple of Christ. It seems like in this world, the bigger churches get, the more the leader wants to own it. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Mm -hmm. it becomes the CEO. Mm -hmm. These are my people. And now God works for me. Mm -hmm. My Lord. My Lord. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Mm -hmm. People on social media putting up their stats mm -hmm. as if they had something to do with it. Mm. People bragging about how many came to the Lord under their ministry. Mm. My Lord, my Lord. But see, they'll count that. But them same ones that go back out there to the world, they don't say how many they lost. They only have wins. <laughs> what kind of record is that? But that discipline we got at home, our parents did it, praise God, to make us better. And people talk about, don't judge me, you can't judge me. Uh, stop putting people down. Let me tell you, a lot of times my mama put me down to bring me up. Yeah. In other words, she gave me constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. And what she was doing, she was building me up. She didn't tell me all good stuff. She gave me good warnings. She told me, don't do this and don't do that. And listen, sometimes she told me, Sean, you stink and you can't go outside 
stinking like that. Take a bath. Amen. You're growing up, boy. Put on deodorant. She told me these things. And as young people, you want to get outside. You want to play. You don't care if anybody thinks you stink or not until they all start talking about you. And then you run home to mama. And you think, mama's going to rescue me because everybody talking about me stinking. And the first thing mama do, I told you, take a bath. <laughs> but what mama was doing, she was building us up. She was making us stronger. That's what mama and daddy was doing. And now, we're not alienated, y'all. We're not children of wrath. Right. We're not children of the devil. Yeah. Right. We are the sons of We have the Holy Spirit. We are led of the Holy Spirit. We are taught and trained by grace. We live as lights in this dark world. We are the salt of the earth. We are uh, the light of the world. A, a city set on a hill cannot be what? Yeah. Yeah. We are his children. Right. And we are to walk as his children. Right. As obedient children. Right. And you know God is a good father. Yes. Why is he a good father? Because he don't treat us like bastards. Right. He them he loves, he chastens. Yes. God wants his children to be just like his son. Yes. God, praise God, has made us in his image. Yes. And he puts his image in us. Yes. Just like when you look at the coin that Jesus said, whose image is that? And they said, that's Caesar. They can look at the coin and they said that was Caesar. Yeah. People ought to be able to look at you as a child of God and when they see you, they see God's image and they say, whose image is that? That is God's image. And so what does God do in his wisdom? Praise God. He takes all of our ups, our downs. He takes our sins. He takes those things that we should do, that we don't do, and those things we shouldn't do, and those things that we do, and he chases us. He sanctifies us. He makes us more like Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Amen, That's a good God. Yes, it is. That's a wise God yes. that can take all of those things and work them out for my good. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, we know that chastening for the moment may seem grievous and not joyous, but it's working something in us. It's the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Yes. Oh, yes. That's good. That's good. God is making us more like Him. Yes. If you stand and testify and you say what I've been saying for 20 years, well, it all sound like it when you're going through trials and trials. Yes. Yes. That's right, bro. <laughs> Do you worship God in the midst of trial and tribulation when things ain't going your way? Do you worship or do you whine? Say, uh, Say yeah. Do you praise him or do you pout? Yeah. Do you complain or do you give him glory? Do you sound like David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue be in my mouth. Do you realize, do you come to the conclusion, as Jones said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Trust him? Yes, God never told Job while he was going through. But what Job's conclusion, he came to, that this was all about God's glory. Yeah. Amen. He didn't have to explain to him, well, you know, Satan wanted to know something, and I just had to prove to him, so you know this is why things go like this. No! Job came to the conclusion that, listen, it is God Amen. who is 
to be worshipped yes. and to be glorified. Yes. Yes. Salvation, the glory doesn't belong to us, but it belongs oh, to Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father, spirits, and live? For they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up your hands which hang down <clears throat> and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, yes. but let it rather be healed. Praise God. That's our lesson for this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We're going to ask that the musicians come and give us a golden song. Whom the Lord loves.